Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of genetic variation, information and relationships, and more specifically on the topic of species and taxonomy. Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson 6 of 8 in this tutorial, covering species and taxonomy. This is our sixth video in our series of 8 lessons on the topic of DNA and genes. In the last lesson, we looked at genetic diversity and how it enables natural selection to occur. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. The first is to look at the classification system, and then we will cover the binomial naming and species. Finally, we will look at advances in immunology and genome sequencing. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. The first one is to look at the phylogenetic classification system. Classification is how organisms are arranged into different taxonomical groups based on their similarities and differences. Organisms that are very similar are often classified into the same groups and subgroups. Taxonomy is the study of classification. It refers to the actual process of studying the similarities and differences in organisms, eventually putting them into groups. Taxonomy takes into account many things, including the physical appearance of organisms, the anatomy, genetics, and physiology. More recently, a technique called phylogeny has been used, which is the study of evolutionary relationships between organisms. Next, we will cover different taxonomy systems. The current phylogenetic classification system arranges species into eight taxonomical groups based on their evolutionary origins and relationships. It uses a hierarchy in which smaller groups are placed within larger groups. Each of these groups is called a taxon. There are some key points to remember. First, there is no overlap between the groups. And there is only ever one organism in one group at each level. The higher groups will have many organisms, and there are more organisms in the early groups. Organisms lower down are more closely related. For example, different types of humans are in the same species, whereas a human and a chimpanzee may be in the same domain. Naturally, two humans are more similar to each other than a human and a goat. The system is continuously updating. You don't need to know all the domains that we listed, but you should know the top two tiers of the classification system reasonably well. There are eight groups in the classification system that you should know of. The first one is domain, and the next is kingdom then phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. 
there is a simple phrase to help you remember the stages. Now let's look more closely at domains. All life on Earth can be characterised into three domains. The first is domain bacteria, which is made of unicellular prokaryotic bacteria. The next domain is domain archaea, which is made of unicellular prokaryotic organisms that are similar to bacteria but are in some ways more related to eukaryotes. Domain eukarya is made up of all unicellular and multicellular eukaryotic organisms. Each of the domains can be broken down into different kingdoms. In domain eukarya, there are four major kingdoms. The kingdom protista, which has unicellular protists such as amoeba, The kingdom fungi is made up of different types of fungi. The kingdom plantae is made up of the true plant species on earth. And the animal kingdom is made up of all the animals we can find on earth. Each of the kingdoms can be broken down into different phyla. The kingdom animalia consists of 11 distinct phyla. Each of the phylum can bro be broken down into many different classes. Classes are designed to group together similar species within a phylum. Classes are further broken down into orders. Orders can be further broken down into families, which can be further broken down into genuses. Genuses are finally broken down into species. Here we can see an example of the classification system. Each split in the branch is going to simplify a common ancestor. For example, humans and hagfish had a common ancestor from just over 500 million years ago, whilst humans and fruit flies had a common ancestor from roughly 570 million years ago. You don't need to memorise any of these trees for the exam, but they can easily give you a tree like this to analyse. Now we will look at naming species. Every single species on Earth has a scientific name. This name is binomial meaning it comes in two parts. The first part of the name signifies the genus that the species belongs to, and the second part of the name uniquely identifies it as its own species. For example, the domestic dog is known as Canis familiaris. Canis is the genus name. Other animals in the genus Canis include wolves. Familiaris is the species name for the domesticated dog. It distinguishes this dog from the other members of the genus Canis. Here are some other examples. The first word, genus, has to begin in a capital letter, and the second word, which is species, begins in a lowercase letter. Sometimes the mark schemes can be quite fussy, so remember this well. Now we will look at how we know that two organisms belong to the same species. Let's have a go at this question together. We'll give three example definitions here. We can say that a species is a group of individuals who are most common with each other and that two individuals belong to the same species if they can successfully mate with each other. For the third mark, we can talk about individuals in the same species tending to have a similar appearance, and anatomy, genetics, phylo phylogeny and physiology. 
the second definition is not entirely true. Many animals within a genus can actually mate with each other. However, the offspring that are produced are called hybrids, which are usually infertile, which means they cannot reproduce their own. For example, a horse can be mated to a donkey to produce a mule, but mules are not fertile. Therefore, we have to remember to mention the term fertile offspring. Courtship behaviours are ritualised attractions to attract members of the opposite sex of the same species. They enable the development of a bond in order to raise the offspring together. Every species has its own courtship behaviour. For example, birds sing to attract other birds. Only animals of the same species will be attracted. Courtship behaviour promotes prezygotic isolation. This is a series of barriers that prevent the sperm or egg of an individual from one species combining with that of an individual from a different species. It is important because it ensures that when two individuals mate, the chances of successful fertilisation is increased. For example, a certain type of bird makes a squeaking noise as part of their courtship behaviour. Finally, we will cover immunology and gene sequencing. In this section, we will discuss two important techniques used to help group organisms together. The study of taxonomy relies heavily on the field of phylogenetics. This is a series of techniques that can be utilised to identify similarities between organisms during their classification. We can also use immunological techniques and gene sequencing. Antibodies are specialised proteins which can recognise and bind to a specific antigen. Antigens with similar functions can have dissimilar structures in different species. Therefore, it may be that an antibody from one species is against a certain kind of antigen, but may not recognise the same antigen in another species. Antibodies against human haemoglobin can be used to identify organisms similar to humans. Almost all organisms in the order of mammals have haemoglobin. If the antibody binds, the organism may be related to humans because it means that the structure of haemoglobin is similar. In gene sequencing, the entire base sequence can be determined. We can compare this with other species. To assess the similarity and to see how closely related they actually are. This field is known as comparative genomics. Here, we can see that humans, chimpanzees and gorillas are very similar to each other, but orangutans are very different. We've now covered all the specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you didn't understand. We've now completed Lesson 6. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.